The power of the mind. Isn't it amazing how it can be both your best friend and your worst enemy? I know what you're thinking, not my mind. Yes, your mind too. Take a look at the person sitting to your right and to your left. <laughs> Approximately half of the population will struggle with suicidal thoughts at some point in their lives. So statistically, if that's not you, it most likely will be the person on your right or your left. <laughs> The capacity for human language and the ability to think, reason and judge with our minds has given rise to both our greatest achievements as well as our miseries. So what does your mind say to you in your darkest hour? I'll let you in on a secret. Mine says these three words. Yes, you read that right. I am stupid. I know, I know. I'm a psychologist. I have a PhD. Surely I can sort this out and be rational. Well. Research demonstrates that sometimes, the more we try not to have particular thoughts, the more they show up. And the more suffering we create. <laughs> so what does your mind say to you in your darkest hour? Any of these? This is one of life's great secrets. We are all walking around with these thoughts in some form or another. So what can we do with such thoughts? Well, we designed a study and we asked this question. Does low self-esteem have to lead to worsening mental health or does it depend on the context? Could self-compassion save the day? <laughs> um, self-esteem can be thought of as our sense of self-worth and research does indeed demonstrate that low self-esteem leads to worse outcomes across time, such as diminishing mental health, depression and even suicidal thoughts. <laughs> um, one response to such findings is to boost people's self-esteem, if only it were this easy. Um, we will all suffer at times and experience hits to our self-esteem. So if this is the human condition, what can we do? Well, self-compassion may offer an alternative. Kristen Neff pioneered research in this area, drawing on the Eastern traditions, she defined self-compassion as comprising three main components. One, turning to oneself with self-kindness rather than harsh criticism or judgment. Two, recognising that one's struggles are part of the shared human experience. And three, holding one's painful thoughts and feelings in mindful awareness, as opposed to pushing them away or getting all caught up in them. Research has demonstrated an association between self-compassion and improved mental health. However, limited research exists among young people. Our research question was, would self-compassion offer protective mental health benefits for young people who were low in self-esteem? So we surveyed 2,488 adolescents in grades 9 and again in grade 10. Um, from 17 high schools, we co collected their self-report measures on the self-compassion scale, self-esteem scale and the Goldberg General Health Questionnaire which assesses mental health distress. We undertook structural equation modelling to form latent variables from our self-report scale items. In path one, we examined self-esteem predicting mental health in year 10. In path two, self-compassion predicting mental health in year 10. And in path three, the interaction between self-compassion and self-esteem predicting mental health in year 10. We controlled for gender as well as mental health the previous year in all our analyses. A number of findings emerged from this research. However, most interesting was a significant interaction, which did indeed demonstrate that self-compassion help, helps protect against the negative effects of low self-esteem. In other words, self-compassionate adolescents do appear to forgive their personal failings, recognise them as normal, and this, in turn, protects their mental health. So what are the practical implications of such findings? Well, as parents or educators, you can help pass on self-compassion skills by offering up some of your own struggles. You can discuss how you respond with kindness and there's a good chance everyone's mental health may benefit. So next time you're struggling, ask yourself, what will you do? You could consider the principles of self-compassion or you could go home and kick the cat. Thank you. <laughs>